Adam is in the southwest of Tuscany and leaving the mainland on a ferry. He is heading to the tiny island of Elba. In this episode, Adam will follow the footsteps of Napoleon, who lived here in exile before deciding to escape and head north, eventually to Waterloo. Adam will start in the town of Portoferraio at Fort Falcone to witness a spectacular reenactment. He learns to cook the famous fisherman soup cacciucco and heads to the dizzying heights of Elba. Napoleon's favorite dish was reputed to be a tomato-based chicken recipe, but I wouldn't have thought he would have got it here in exile. So what do you eat here in Elba? Join me on my past the pilgrimage. <laughs> Napoleon was exiled to Elba as a condition of the Treaty of Fontainebleau. He arrived on the 3rd of May 1814 as sovereign over the island and its then 14,000 residents, retaining his title as emperor as part of the treaty. But in his abdication and surrender, did they send the man who had conquered the greater part of Europe off to a heavily guarded prison? No, they made him sovereign of a beautiful Tuscan paradise. Nina, tell me a bit about this villa and Napoleon's presence here. Well, Napoleon actually chose this residence to be his residence as he was being brought, escorted uh, here after the Fontainebleau Treaty of the 12th of April, 1814, where it was decided that Napoleon should abdicate and be exiled. Uh, although he was given a choice of where to be exiled and he chose uh, the island of Elba. And as he came in on the 3rd of May, 1814, he actually chose this residence to become his official residence on the island. Why this residence? Well, this residence in particular, because as you can see, uh, he could gain great visibility overlooking the uh, natural harbour in front of you. And he was in a very cosy position, just four nautical miles away from the coast of Tuscany. From the centre, from the uh, marina in the centre, you cannot see this house. Ah, so he's hidden on one side, but he could see Italy on the other side. Absolutely. After the Fontainebleau Treaty and the Peace of Amiens, Napoleon actually has his men here. And uh, the island is governed by the French. So of course, uh, he brings not only notoriety to the island of Elba, that will happen with his so-called exile. But to begin with, of course, he brings the French rule over the island. So it's a, a great modernity for the times. Of course, he has roads set, crops brought, but Moreover, he brings a sense of identity, given the island had been divided, fragmented into three parts for uh, over 200 years. On a smaller scale, the island of Elba experiences what the rest of Italy will experience, not so much with France, but with Napoleon. So you could say he put Elba on the map? Absolutely. Elba comes on the charts, and still today its not notoriety uh, is given, let's say, it's brought by Napoleon. Uh, he was probably not the most important man uh, who changed the course of our history, but of course, he's the one who did uh, great marketing for us, it goes without saying. When Napoleon creates the Cisalpine Republic in Italy, he also uh, gives the Cisalpine Republic a flag, which uh, it, later on by Garibaldi will be transformed into the Italian Tricolore. Napoleon substituted the uh, blue of the French flag with his favourite colour, green. Ah, hence comes the Italian flag. Absolutely. Green, white, red. Yeah, absolutely. Tricolore Italiano, Napoleone. So Napoleon had his troops here. 
Yes, he did have his troops here. His troops were here uh, since 1803, but of course, with him being exiled here, they augmented. <laughs> they became a bigger volume. Did he look after them? Oh, of course he looked after them. He looked after them very, very well because uh, it was in Napoleon's plans to return to France. How did he do this? Like? Well, he paid them a wage, and those wages came from the mines he was exploiting, so he gave them a wage. Uh, but on top of that, and moreover, he fed them. So, what did they eat? <laughs> they ate, in particular, all dishes that are tied to the sea. Uh, of course, uh, there was a combination of both in order to uh, give them a bit more substance. So crops he imported, like potatoes, were added. And we have a dish, for instance, polpo e patate. Octopus with potato, I've seen Absolutely. that, yeah. I've seen that. But in particular, there was one dish that he favoured. What dish? Come on, tell me, tell me. It was il cacciucco. Rumour has it that one of Napoleon's favourite dishes here in Elba was cacciucco, a fisherman's stew. One day he was walking along the foreshore and he looked out to see all these boats, but his nose went, oh, I could smell something, he says. So off he went, trying to find out what that smell was. He came across a fisherman making a fish stew. He said, excuse me, sir, may I try something? He said, sit down. Grabbed him a plate, put some crusty old bread on the base first and loaded up with this amazing fish stew. He sat there and scoffed it all up. Well. Napoleon was very happy. He just sat and enjoyed the beautiful taste. Now, I have the opportunity here in Scaleri to have my own chef, Alessandro, up top to show me how to make cachuco. After the break, Adam and Alessandro cook up Napoleon's cachuco. Adam is following the footsteps of an emperor in exile, trying to find out what sort of food Napoleon might have eaten while he was here. Ciao Adam. Alessandro, cacciucco, si? Si, oggi prepariamo il cacciucco alla Livornese, o meglio, all'Elbana. Ingredients, look at this, this array of seafood looking amazing. Polpo. Octopus. Octopus. Seppia. Carofish. Scorfano. I don't know scorfo, but it looks to me like a red mullet, a red fish. Cicale di mare. Look at this. I've never seen this before. It looks <laughs> cross between a bug and a prawn to me. Gallinella. Gallinella, another white fish, yeah. Vongole. Yeah, I know that. Cockles. See. Si. Uh, muscoli. Mussels. Uh, San Pietro. Monkfish. Monkfish. All right. So, Alessandro, what's the first thing we do? Okay. Noi cominciamo a tagliare. Prendi il polpo. No worries. I'll get onto the octopus. So Alessandro's told me to cut up two tentacles of this beautiful octopus. Look at that, okay. nice and small. Ah, Mettiamo oil into the pan. Prima olio. The smell of this octopus, seriously. Straight out of the ocean, right behind us, I can guarantee that. Mettiamo cipolla. Cipolla, ah. Garlic. Hmm. Okay, two, three Cipolla. minutes to fry off the onions and garlic and get all the flavor working together. Peperoncino. Chili, yeehaw, beauty. So in with the octopus into the pan. So cutting up the cuttlefish. We'll do it. E grande o piccolo? Grande, così. I like this. Nice big pieces of fish. You know, octopus cuttlefish. Poi bagniamo con il vino bianco. Vino bianco? Mm. No rosso, no. No, bianco. Bianco. Okay. Perché abbiamo messo tutti i pesci. Alessandro just told me that in total, cooking time, it's about 40 minutes to make this dish. Il filetto, no? No, trancio. Ha ha! So I just asked him, is he going to fill up the fish? You know, this is something we do at home. But, flavour, right there. Anything cooked on the bone is flavour. By the time you've got 40 to 50 minutes of cooking this dish, the actual flesh of the fish is going to fall off. It's just going to peel off like butter. Uh, tomato paste. Now he's mixing it all together, combining all the flavours. But he's being ever so gentle. Yeah, he's respecting the seafood. Ha, ah, the monkfish. The daddy mac of all fishes. Have a look at it. So. Okay. Three different types of fish here, look at that. Mettiamo See, fish in. Il pesce so, e il the fish is going to take anywhere between 10 to 12 minutes to cook away. It's smelling amazing. Alessandro. Mettiamo le cicale. <laughs> These little bug prawny fishies are going in now. Quando minuti? Quattro minuti. So four minutes to cook these. Prendiamo il pane, tostato. So toasted bread. L'aglio. How with garlic.
Devo mangiare? Sì, certo. <ride> ah, allora. Un po' di olio. Olio, ti finisci. Beautiful. First one. Quattro. Vongole. Vongole. Mmm. If you're ever in Elba, follow your nose, find Cacciuco because this is fantastic. Grazie Alessandro. Grazie a te. Thank you. Napoleon brought a worldliness to the island of Elba, from the food to the arts. Nina, this is a quite impressive theatre. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, in fact, this was not born as a theatre, but as a church, a military church. Napoleon transformed it into a theatre to bring a bit of worldliness to this island. And of course, they all flocked. We did not have nobility, but the richer families all flocked and did everything they possibly could to purchase a box next door to l'Empereur, to the Emperor. His box comprised these three boxes, but of course they were misled in that uh, this theatre only opened one month before Napoleon fled and returned to France. So he, did he make it opening night or...? No, he actually never did. He was, we could say, the phantom of the opera. Seems Napoleon had it in for a small town in the hills of Elba called Capolivri. After the break, we find out how narrowly escaped occupation. According to the locals of Capolivri, Napoleon wasn't too happy with this town, and there's a colorful legend of how it was saved. Capolivari was always uh, a town a little bit difficult. Uh, all the rest of the island more or less uh, agreed to have Napoleon uh, as imperator. In Capolivari there was a lot of people against and uh, for this there was a council in the town and then uh, they decided uh, to accept not uh, Napoleon and to put uh, a barrier between uh, Capolivari and the rest of the island. Then uh, story and legend are a bit mixing. Story is that uh, this was uh, a period of two, three months uh, with uh, a lot of problems uh, between two groups in Capolivari and then at the end uh, Napoleon was more or less accepted. What people is telling us, our old people of the town, is that Napoleon decided to distract Capolivari and so they put a camp, a military camp, at the beginning of the hill of Capolivari and they decided the day after to enter in Capolivari with the power. Artillery! One family of Capolivari, Ivantini, had uh, one uh, very nice girl, and uh, in the night uh, she went uh, to the camp of Napoleon to convince him to uh, avoid, to disrupt Capolivari. How they do, we don't know. <laughs> Napoleon, at the end, uh, decided uh, to uh, leave Capolivari and then uh, three, four days after he came again and entered in peace in Capolivari. It would appear that Capolivari was saved from occupation by the charm and beauty of one of the town's daughters. Every year she is honoured by a festival and a square was built in her name. Adam has set himself up on the jetty in Porto Azzurro with chef Luciano to learn how to make an iconic Elba pasta dish of the region called penne in barca. Literally, penne on the boat. Luciano, the ingredients to make penne in barca is? Is uh, garlic, red chili, clams, pe penne, penne, eggs, eggs. 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 You put eggs in with eggs. seafood? Oh, man, no. Nah, <laughs> Take There's no way. Uh, There's something I would never do. Eggs. I would never put eggs with seafood. Only eggs. You sure? Mm. So the so story so is told that sure. a chef, chef, a Siwono Koko, was on the boat with his friends 
and he had to cook something for him and he had some clams from the ocean and he looked in his cupboard and he found the penne and he had some eggs. So he cooked all up, mixed it together and penne barca came around. Okay. Should we start? Okay. Let's okay. do it. Oliver, how are you? Oliver. Tick, that's a good start for me. Garlic. Garlic. So far, it's looking all good to me. This is seeming a little bit like uh, spaghetti vongole, you know, uh, clams. See, no. Chili. Chili. Hey, chili. chili. Bam, bam. A gir, a gir. And now, clams. Okay. And the clams. Clams. So when the clams are open, stop. 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 It's okay. It's ready? It's okay. It's ready. Oh, look at the oh. clams. They popped open. That liquid has come from the inside of the clams. Obviously coming from the ocean, that beautiful flavor. Garlic, chili. Ooh, lovely. Now. Bomba. Now, eggs. Eggs. Uh, I don't know, Luciano. Me, I'm a little bit worried. Eggs with seafood. No eggs. Okay, okay. 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 All right. All right. I believe you. Okay. Pasta. Pasta. Un moment. Pasta. Pasta. Okay. Eggs. In it goes. Ah, so the heat from the pasta and the clams and the garlic and the chili is going to cook the egg and thicken up the sauce. Just maybe. No, Just no. maybe. An auto, do egg, two eggs. Oh my goodness. Knowing Luciano and the many years he's been in the kitchen, I'm sure he wouldn't leave me down the garden path. And the end? At the end, yes. Ah, parsley. E finito. Finish. Finito. First do. Okay. It smells delicious. Well, if you can't find the fork, God gave us hands. Well, that's fantastic. Luciano, grazie. Thank you. Bellissimo. On February 26, 1815, Napoleon somehow snuck past his guards and escaped from Elba. The impact of Napoleon's 300-day exile can still be seen in modern Elba with its infrastructure, culture, and food. After the break, Adam takes what he has learned on Elba and makes his own creation worthy of an emperor. Napoleon had a soft spot for a plate of carciucco, but he also didn't mind a plate of crab pasta. And that's what I'm cooking next, with nice, big ribbons of pappardelle. For the full list of ingredients and method, visit Adam's Pasta Pilgrimage. So the first step to this recipe is taking our pappardelle and putting it into our salted boiling water. With our pappardelle, they're in lovely nests. Just be gentle dropping them into the water. And what I recommend Instead of using tongs, use your spoon, the back of the spoon there, just the handle, just to help them unravel. They're going to take about 10 minutes to cook, so we need to get our sauce on the go. Good splash of olive oil into our pan. Chop up some garlic. Into the pan with our garlic. Chili. This is an optional extra. I like just a hint of chili with my crab pasta. Just get that little bit of zing happening. I reckon Napoleon would have liked a little bit of zing with his pasta too. So, up to you, yes or no? I add the seeds as well. In they go. Now, just bring your heat up to about medium. Allow that to saute into our olive oil. We have our crab meat next. So we're gonna add that into the pan. And with our spoon, we're just gonna use it to break it down, all that beautiful crab meat, coat it with the oil, the garlic and chili. I'm just gonna add a splash of brandy. Just a splash, like so. Allow that to cook down by half, because that's going to take all the alcohol out. Then we're going to add in our little cherry tomatoes. Back of the spoon, just squash those little cherry tomatoes to release all the beautiful flavor inside. No salt needed. I'm just going to add a little bit of cracked pepper. I'm going to bring that up to the boil, drop it down to simmer for two to three minutes. Okay, my sauce is looking exactly where I want it to be. Just chop a little bit of parsley. Like so, into the pan. This is my little hidden ingredient. Some people add cream, I like to add mascarpone. Why? Because 
I like that little bit of cheesiness to it. And mascarpone is a little bit higher fat content and nice and rich and works well with the crab. So at this point, I'm gonna turn my heat right down to minimal. Just stir that through. Because mascarpone being a cheese, if you have too high a heat, it's gonna split and curdle in your sauce. Pasta. Nice and gentle with your ribbon, straight out of the pasta water, straining off all the water into the pan. Just a little flick, nice and gentle. It smells amazing. Now I just need to try some. Mm. I think if Napoleon was still around, he'd be giving me the salute on this pasta. There's my pappardelle with crab meat. It was very apparent to me that Napoleon wasn't an unwelcome guest to Elba. In fact, the many residents I spoke with only had praise for the improvements he made to the island. Next time, like Napoleon, Adam leaves Elba and heads north, not to Waterloo, but to the ancient city of Volterra. For this episode's recipes, stories and more, visit Adam's Pastor Pilgrimage 